Hello everybody, my name is Brick. Bricky if you are feeling fancy. Today is a different video. I am doing a tier list because I like tier lists and it's basically YouTube. It's pure YouTube click, not really clickbait, but it's the thing on YouTube right now. And I honestly feel like if I'm gonna make a tier list on, on really anything that isn't maybe video game butts or uh, how to properly use bricks, it should be on Mass Effect Squad Mates. So Mass Effect is my favorite game series of all time. Whenever people ask me what my favorite game ever is, I say the Mass Effect trilogy because they all have their strengths. One story, two characters, three combat and, and gameplay. But I took them all together. Well, I didn't take them all together. There's actually a prior made tier list right here. Somebody else already put together, which makes it much easier for me. And I am going to go ahead and rate all of the Mass Effect Squad Mates through this tier list. So instead of S I changed it to alien banging because it really there's no better term for Mass Effect and instead of a like E or F tier I have dead if possible if I could have killed them on Vermeer they would be dead and it would have been wonderful so here is the tier list I am most likely going to go straight uh, left to right or maybe I should go right to left I don't really know I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of go with it I'm gonna go I'm gonna go bottom to top we'll do it that way it might make it a little bit easier there so starting off our first character we have Zaid Masani now Zaid is the long-term bounty hunter squad may you get in Mass Effect 2 and only in Mass Effect 2 and I think he is firmly in the C tier. Now, Zaid it was the DLC for Mass Effect 2. He wasn't the most interesting of characters. However, they did give him a lot more flair and enjoyment in Mass Effect 3, particularly with the Citadel DLC. That's where they gave him the most kind of little bit of gusto between him trying to booby trap your apartment, between him hitting on Samara, and, uh, between, and him trying to win at a crane game. If it if it wasn't for some of the adjustments given to him in the third game, I probably would have put him in D tier. But I don't think he's F tier. Like, I don't hate him, but he has very little character development. And he did have a little bit at the end, but overall, he is not around a ton. Next up, we've got Erdnot Rex. Now, Rex was a squad mate in the first game and for the Citadel DLC in the third game. And I think he belongs squarely at A tier. I, I would... Yeah, I'm going to trigger a lot of people with this list. I'm going to trigger a lot of people, but I've I played these games a lot, all right? I played them a lot, a lot. I think I have like 500 hours in the third game or something, all right? I've, I've done it a lot, but I'm going to trigger a lot of people with this list, but I have my reasonings. If I could make an A plus tier, I would put Rex in there. He's at the really upper echelons of A tier, not quite S tier, but he's damn close. Ernot Rex is a fantastic companion. He's hilarious. He's got a bunch of excellent dialogue. You learn a lot about the Genophage and the Krogan through him in the first game, though he does lack a little bit of personality in the first game. And he's a little bit muted compared to how he is in the second and third. He's in the second game kind of barely any, if I'm being honest, but every time he is in there, he carries a lot of presence. And the third game, he's pretty phenomenal. He's fun. He's got a lot of heart to him. And overall, Rex is just a fantastic character and a great window into the Krogans and the Krogan lore. He is not quite S tier because of his muted first game and how barely he is even in the second game, but he's still fantastic. Next up is Tali Zora. Oh, depends. Naraya, Vos Normandy, uh, whatever it is at this point. Uh, Tally goes in mm, Razor Synapse. You shut your whore mouth. Tally goes squarely in the alien banging tier. This should surprise very few people. If I put Tally in the A tier, I might have to like go into witness protection. Tally fans are some of the most rabid, crazy fans out there, but they have good reason. Tally as a character is enjoying, is very enjoyable. She's got a very kind of punk attitude to her. She's kind of sassy. There has a lot of a lot of wit and charm with her, but she also puts that window into the Quarian people and the guests and her personal hatred for the Geth and her father's work and some of the excellent, excellent kind of history and lore you get with her loyalty mission in the second game and how it translates to the third game. Most primarily had the admirals kind of switching their tunes with you in the second game. One is nice, one is mean. In the third game, they're reversed. A lot of what Tally has 
really provides not only an interesting backstory to her and to the Quarians, but she as herself is just a great character. They did her dirty with her uh, final romance scene in the third game and how they showed her face. However, as far as I know, the Mass Effect 3 was development hell in its purest form. So I have to give them a little bit of, uh, of leeway on that one, even though it did kind of suck. But besides that, you have to have a character who must be really, really great to never be able to see them and have everybody like her anyway. And she's got a fat ass, but it's mainly... The character is just wonderful. Next up, we've got Edie, the Enhanced Defense Intelligence, created by Cerberus. I would put her actually pretty high up in the A tier. I did not expect to like Edie as much. She started in the second game as just a simple artificial intelligence, didn't do much, but once Joker removed her locks, she became far more interesting, far funnier as well. And in the third game, she's great. I mean, it is kind of humorous that they gave the AI a big, giant, triple D <laughs> robot body, but it kind of makes sense when you actually, when you play the game, you're like, okay, if you're taking over the Cerberus body, I guess. It is kind of, it is pretty fan service that she's got this hot robot body she gets in the third game. But with that being said, her relationship with Joker is extremely cute. Uh, I love all the comments you can talk to her. It provides that nice little what it means to be alive type commentary. Her dialogue in the synthesis ending is actually pretty good. Even if the ending isn't my favorite, her monologue is actually quite heartfelt. And especially in the final Citadel DLC, she has some the best best lines is absolutely hilarious her at the party especially talking with samantha trainer is just absolutely on the floor laughing stuff and she's pretty good in combat as well and provides some decent dialogue during missions i expected her to be a lot more cringy than i thought she was but i i thoroughly liked her character Next up, we have Samara. Samara, I think, goes straightly in the B tier. A lot of people love Samara. I like Samara a decent amount. I don't consider her, like, incredible, but she is an interesting character, kind of like your little samurai monk sort of person. I like her. I like what she does. She's a little bit underused in the third game. I mean, it kind of makes sense. She's literally like, she's literally a monk. Her emotions are very, are very muted, but she does have some pretty good moments in the second one. Most primarily her loyalty mission is actually quite interesting and is very solid. Uh, she's, she's pretty, she's pretty interesting. Next up, we have Morden Solis. Morden Solis is without question in the alien banging tier. Morden is one of the best developed characters in games period. He might be the best developed character in all of Mass Effect. He is a not only a very interesting scientist, but he's a scientist at the end of his life who did extremely morally questionable things that, of course, he defends entirely, but as time goes on, he kind of goes back and struggles with it a little bit more. He has one of the best send-offs in games. His his final moments in the third game are fantastic and extremely well done. He, I All of his quotes are, are great. The Scientist Solarian song is phenomenal. Um, one of my favorite quotes of his is, uh, had to be me. Somebody else might have gotten it wrong. It's a wonderful uh, kind of representation of Morden with his consistent personal stake in everything and how he has to handle everything himself or he might someone else might have gone it wrong you know Morden is incredible he has the best loyalty mission in the second game by far M religious and moral doubts great great character and got some great quips and it's kind of funny sometimes so Morden easily s tier alien bang him next up we got Miranda Lawson I would put Miranda roughly in the c tier now, I'm a, I was a little rough on this one. I honestly wasn't quite sure how I wanted to or where I wanted to place Miranda. I, I kind of want, it was between B or C. It was either B or C. Miranda's just not very interesting. That's her problem. She looks good, obviously. Her butt's in every goddamn photo uh, or every goddamn conversation you have as a butt shot. Uh, she's got a somewhat interesting thing with her being like a test tube baby, but her situation with her dad is resolved insanely quickly. Her sister's thing is not super, well, it's resolved quickly in the third game. 
Her sister's thing is not overly interesting. You get a bit more enjoyment out of the character if you romance her, but she doesn't really change much. She's just kind of horny. It's not super interesting at all. And how she turned coats from Cerberus, and especially if you bring her in the final mission of the second game, is kind of hilarious. How she's just like, yeah, Cerberus is the best. And it's like, yeah, you know what? Screw you, elusive man. I hate you. Die. It's so strange about her. She's just not very convincing. Um, got some good moments here and there. I did enjoy her loyalty mission to a certain extent. But she seemed like the box art girl and kind of played like it as well. So that not too big on, on uh, Miranda. Ashley Williams. <sighs> I had a girl I left on Vermeer. She's Ash. Because she got nuked, so she's Ash. I don't know a single Mass Effect fan who didn't kill Ashley on Vermeer. Unless you were banging her. And even then, why would you? Uh, Ashley is one note. She's very, I, I'm here, I'm a soldier, I'm an alliance. Yes, sir, sir, this, that, and the other thing. And then she's like, space racist. She doesn't like aliens. Hey, oh, so many aliens on this ship. Oh, God. All these minorities. Why are they here? In, in on the ship? Are you sure about this commander? A Turian on board? They're taking our jobs away. Okay. I can't. I can't do Ashley. And I the only like Caden isn't great, in my opinion. We'll we'll talk about him later. But he takes a big 180 in the third game. Ashley remains boring and annoying. Less racist. In the third game, that's it. But she is just consistently annoying. Ashley's sole purpose. You know that Rick and Morty meme? What is my purpose? You, you serve butter or, or whatever it is. Hers is to die on Vermeer consistently. All right? She's to be a, a, a nice black silhouette when she's gone later on in the first game. I'm sorry. She's just horrible. Next up, Legion. A tier. The Both the robot squad mates go to A tier. Legion is a... Fantastic character, a great surprise for big Mass Effect 1 fans. Getting a Geth squad mate was not only just surprising, extremely surprising, but one that had so much intrigue in it, one with a thousand plus platforms on it for the consistent amounts of hyper intelligence, the N7 armor strapped to him that we never get a legitimate reason why he put it on, kind of this sentimental thing, big hole in his chest, uh, discussion between him and the heretics, the re uh, rewriting. His final scene, I think, was a little bit fast. You know, Legion's final farewell is a, is a tad bit quick, a little too sudden for me. You know, Morden's and, and a couple others was kind of a little bit more well done. His was a little bit too sudden. But overall, like how Tally is a great window into the Quarians, Legion is a great window into the Geth, and the Tally, uh, Legion, Geth, Quarian struggle is easily some of the most charismatic and interesting stuff in Mass Effect, and Legion is also up there as well. He's great, interesting, and overall just a, a wonderful character. Next up is Kasumi Goto. A lot of you are going to be probably upset with me about this one. I'm going to put Kasumi in the C tier. Kasumi is not too interesting because she does nothing. She's got a bit of a fun personality. Kind of quirky, kind of weird, uh, emo-ish, and just strange. But she doesn't do anything at all. Zaid turned around slightly in the third game. Because his personality wasn't that interesting already. Kasumi had a good personality, but they didn't do anything with her in the third game. So they kind of like even themselves out. Kasumi, her loyalty mission is decent. Got a good soundtrack. Like that one. I like the gray box. KG and all that stuff is pretty interesting. And in the third game, it's funny watching her rummage through your panty drawer on the party. But her Hanar mission is garbage. And there's and robbing the casino isn't that funny. It's very yeah. And you can't romance her too, which is also unfortunate because I would have liked to have seen that. So she's just kind of meh, unfortunately. So that's that's where she goes. Next up, we've got Caden Alenko. Now this might surprise you. I'm putting Caden in the B tier. Caden is is. 
is kind of horrible in the first game. He's so boring. So boring. His talk with the general Turian who taught him how to be biotic was actually very interesting. Um, that, that I liked about him learning to be a biotic, his struggle as being an L2 implant, getting his migraines and such, and how he's basically got old hardware, but he's using it decently well. Somewhat interesting, but he's so boring. So boring. In the second game, he tells you to tells you to screw off because, of course, he does. Like just like Ash does, except he's less of a dick about it. Surprisingly, and but in the third game, huge one eighty, huge one eighty. After he's finally done judging you about Cerberus in the beginning missions in Mars, and once he recovers, much more interesting, more like better dialogue, more fun to talk to. The Citadel DLC gives him a huge turnaround. He's funny in the missions. He's funny wherever he, or when you take him on like the overall trying to get the clone stuff. His stuff at the party is surprisingly decent. And his whole like cooking steaks is also surprisingly decent. He has a huge 180. He becomes a far better character in the third game. Unlike Ashley. Granted, I he is on the lower end of the B tier. I was trying to flip flop between him going in B and C and Samara in B and A. But overall... He helped. He got better. Next up is Javik, third game Prothean boy. We're putting him squarely in the B tier. Now, I don't. I think he's like flat in the B tier. If Samara's up and Caden's down, he's in the middle. Javik is got a great background. His mission is very good. I like what he brings to the table. Talking to him on the Normandy is very interesting. I like his airlock memes. Also good. He's just kind of a dick all the time, forever. And the fact that you have to constantly deal with him being a dick is a bit annoying. That being said, what you understand why he's a dick. And the more you learn about him, the more you understand him, the more you can appreciate someone whose entire life, literally, from birth, has been war, extinction, and running. You get it? His whole Harbinger of Vengeance is great. He's much more enjoyable in the Citadel DLC. Far funnier. And a guy a little bit more personality. Overall, though, not high enough to put any word special. James Vega. I think our only D tier. He is, I think he's going to be our only D tier. Not interesting, not charismatic most of the time. He is just, uh, is this voice actor Hispanic as well? Because apparently he's, he grew, grew up in LA or something uh, or somewhere in California. And he has this, like, he calls you this, this, couple Spanish names, he messes with Steve Cortez, and, and, but he just he doesn't sell it, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain, because obviously I'm, I'm not Hispanic or anything, but it makes it seem like it's someone's imp impression of, be, of, a, like, a Mexican culture type thing, and it, it just, it comes off strange, I could be totally wrong with this, he could be authentic as hell, but he's, even if he is authentic as hell, he's boring. He's boring. He's just, I'm big muscle man. I, I like to spar and I, I do pull-ups and I'm a soldier. Loco. He's not interesting. He's very boring and he doesn't get much better with any of the other DLCs. Some of his stuff between him and Esteban, uh, Esteban, uh, Steve Cortez, he just calls him Esteban, are kind of okay. But overall, he's just, he's filler. He's filler. And a character that's filler is the least enjoyable kind of character. Speaking of filler, Jacob Taylor. Boop. Oh, poor Jacob. Poor Jacob. Um, God, it feels kind of weird putting the only black squad man on the far bottom, doesn't it? But I don't know a single person who liked Jacob. His loyalty mission is probably the best part about him. And, it's, and even that, that's like a B, his loyalty. He is very boring. He is, he is literally James. He is literally James who has a, who has a significantly worse romance, the worst romance in the entire game. You literally date him or whatever. You do whatever you do with him in the second game. And then he leaves you for somebody else in the third game. And no matter how much you push him, he's just like, Shepard, back off. I got a new girl. Go away. And even in the third game, he's so uninteresting he's got no real moral dilemma his dad thing isn't a moral dilemma it's just his dad's a dick and 
I don't even get me started about the fact that Jacob Taylor of all characters is the one with the father issue because that's just oh god. Well, Miranda has one too, but it's just so it's like a bad joke, you know? Yeah, if, if you if if I had to go and open a dictionary of the token black character, Jacob would be in there. He he has no personality. He's not interesting. Nothing about him is interesting. They, they it looks like they put him in there just for the sake of having that character, and then gave him no development. No, I don't know a, I don't know a single person who liked Jacob, and here we are. So that really that really sucks. It really sucks. Anyway, continuing from there, Jack. This was actually a hard one. If you romanced Jack, she is solidly in the A tier. If you didn't, she's in the B tier. And that makes it very difficult to choose from. However, I think I might put her in the A tier only because if the character does a, give a, get a little bit more via the romance, it probably should give her, or it probably should still add to the character itself. Now, I said the same thing about Miranda, but her romance isn't good enough to make her into a B. I probably not. And now that I think about it, probably not. Jack, however, is got a lot more going for her. Obviously, she's kind of a pain in the second game, annoying, and, and very, very edgy and emo. But you get why. You can understand why you can sympathize, and if you get to know her more, you learn more about her. She has her whole thing in the third game. She has an arc, you know, an arc. That's important, you know. Looking at you, Ashley, James, and Jacob, an arc is nice. Sorry. An arc is important, makes the character a lot more better, a lot better, and being a romance with Jack opens up so much, so much more dialogue. It makes her more interesting more charismatic almost, you appreciate her more, and some of the romance stuff is actually not only kind of cute, but kind of has that like, ooh, we're sexy badass people, you know? That's the fun thing about Jack, is that she's what you expected her to be in the beginning, but if you do do the romance, it becomes a lot more, and I can add that to her character. Next up is Liara to Sony. Now, I am gonna give a, get a couple, couple angry people with this one. This was really hard for me. She was either S or A. S or A, S or A, S or A. I had a really hard time figuring out what I wanted her to be in. And at the end of the day, I probably am going to put her in the S tier. Now, why was I going to put her in the A tier? Because, and I hate using this word, but I gotta, she's such a, she's such a Mary Sue. She is so perfect. It's, it's ridiculous. Asari in general are broken. Asari are the biggest, like, Mary Sue people in the entire game. They have natural biotics. They're the most powerful race. They hold the largest political power. They live to a thousand. They're all uh, uni-mono... They're mono-gendered blue... They're mono-gendered, but they're, they're, they're women. They all have tits and ass. All of them have tits and ass. And... They're all strippers, or at least they make up the majority of any kind of strip area, stripper area. They're so ridiculously broken. Liara is kind of the same. She has almost no flaws. And she may have had some flaws in the first game where she was trying to socialize and learn how to act with people and learn how to do stuff. And she was a virgin. If that, That's not a flaw, but that's, I guess, a character thing. But once she became the Shadow Broker, it kind of all went away. Uh, she became unstoppable. The shadow being the shadow broker makes her so ridiculously powerful. But that being that aside, she does have a character arc. She does go from quiet, shy, uh, inexperienced to the shadow broker and an Asari commando badass. And that arc is presented decently well. The Lair of the Shadow Broker is probably the best DLC in the game. Maybe the Citadel DLC. But it's a great DLC with a lot of intrigue. And she is a good squad mate for all... Well, she's in the second game just slightly. But all three games, she's enjoyable. She has some great scenes. And it's almost like Bioware wants you to romance her. It's like she has the most stuff. She has the most content if you romance Liara and so it makes me feel bad 
kind of putting her in the S tier because it almost seems like she was giving given preferential treatment. But how I feel she was treated shouldn't really affect the character. Overall, she's probably an S tier. Close to an A, though, on the lower end of S tier due to how insanely strong Mary Sue she is, no flaws. Next up, Grunt A. Grunt's great. He's wonderful. He's like a little kid. He's fun. He's interesting. He has a coming-of-age tale. He's how you have a kid character without having a kid character. He's, he's hilarious. He's just great. Everyone loves Grunt. I have very little to say about this. He's Grunt. Grunt's great. Grunt's wonderful. You know? He's, he's fun for being fun. While characters like Edie are fun, but also have a lot more development in them, this one, uh, Legion has a lot, I said this one, Legion has a lot for the whole Korean and uh, Geth war, Rex has the Krogan genophage, and Jax has her personal history. It's like Mad Max Fury Road. It's like a 10 out of 10 movie because it's just good and doesn't take itself too seriously. Grunt's the Mad Max of this game. He's just great. Garrus Vakarian. Is there any honest... Is there any honest question where Garrus is going? Let's be, come on, S tier, S tier. Garrus is, he's the best character probably in all of Mass Effect, maybe Morden. Morden and Garrus are the best characters. They're the, they're the most well-written, they're interesting, they have a lot of intrigue. Just when I thought Garrus couldn't get more interesting in the th second game, he gets more interesting in the third game. Between the first game being a uh, cop trying to get past red tape, Second game being a mercil merciless vigilante and a pretty hardcore revenge-filled character. And the third game being about his family and trying to coordinate political stuff for Palavin and the Turians. Garrus is a very, very good character. And overall, he deserves the S spot. He is the best female romance, maybe Liara, because, you know, monogendered. But he is the best female romance in the game. He is the best male bromance in the game because he's just an excellent character to have around. Garrus Vicarian is easily the one that carries the most weight in Mass Effect. And yeah, S tier by far. Finally, we have Thane. Thane is squarely in the A a plus tier, almost S. Thane is wonderful. He's got a great, great story. Heartbreaking. Him and Koliat are very interesting. Almost everything about Thane is wonderful. All I needed was more in order to put him in S tier. He just doesn't have enough screen time. He's on the second half of the dossiers in the second game. And while his loyalty mission is also very, very good, he has not a whole lot of dialogue. And in the third game, he also has very little dialogue and then does pass. And while his funeral scene might bring people to sheer massive tears, he's still not quite enough to be A tier. Or S tier, in my opinion. If you notice a bit of a pattern, three squad mates from all three games are in S tier and Morden. But it makes sense because when you give characters more background, it makes them far more interesting. And all and I mean, let's be honest. The more you put characters in a game, the more screen time they have, generally the more interesting and the more fun they become and the better the characters are. That's just the way it normally works. You know, that's how it goes. Except for Ashley. She's awful. But this is our Mass Effect tier list here. I think it's a pretty solid tier list. You're going to disagree with some of these. Um, probably not these two, unfortunately. And probably not with, with James. But I'm, I can imagine some people putting Miranda up a little bit higher. I can see people with Kasumi. I can see people, people could putting Kasumi much higher. Uh, and probably maybe dropping some people. Maybe you might not put Liara at, all the way up the top. If everybody, everybody's gonna put, gonna put Garrus at S tier. Everybody is. Cause you should. You really should. Cause it's Garrus. And probably Tally as well. They're great characters. Anywho, this has been my, my Mass Effect squad mate tier list. I hope I've made at least a decent amount of sense with my picks. As you can tell, as I was talking, I definitely have... My, uh, I definitely have my fair share of time in these games. I think I've actually completed the campaign of the second game over 25 times before I started YouTube. I'm, I'm a bit of a fanboy. I'm a bit of a fanboy. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, here we are. 
Hopefully it's a good list. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'd love to do more of these if I could, because this is just fun. I like giving my opinions on stuff, especially this, but we'll figure out what I should do next. I don't know, you can leave me a comment what kind of tier list you want to see me do next. That sounds like a good time. All right, well everyone, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Brick. Last video is over there. Next one is up there, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.